In this fun-packed episode, we head down the Great South Road, we hop on a ferry, we visit volcanoes and lakes, and we do a lot of wild camping. Pick some fresh mussels, and Karim gets her hiking shoes on. As I'm approaching the end of our of my hike. Are you ready to eat seafood in, where are we? Puerto Montt. Puerto Montt. Are you ready to eat seafood? Yes, I'm hungry. You look starving. So we are at Angelin Mo Mercado, the local fish and fruit and meat market. I saw a lot of mussels in this market. Also. Ah, so maybe we can buy some mussels and cook that tonight. Yeah. So um, it seems like a very local place plus a very touristy place. We haven't seen many foreign tourists or none. Um, and it's a funny combination of, of small restaurants and um, stalls selling fresh produce. Meat, fish, mussels and fruit Beach and veg. Yeah. Okay, but it's Karim's going to die. Let's go and eat. Okay, go. Puerto Montt is a harbour town with wooden houses that look of European design. The summer is very short here and everything is designed to handle the long, cold spring, winter and autumn. Puerto Montt is also at the northern point of the Great South Road, Ruta 7, better known as the Carretera Austral in Spanish. The Carretera Austral follows the lakes and sea going south. It is one of the most scenic routes in the Americas, if not in the world. Okay, we've seen the sign. We are now officially starting the Carretera Austral Adventure. Welcome. How many kilometers? I don't know. I think it's 1,400 to Villa Ovigan. It could be 1,200. And we will take you along. It looks like we are by the sea, but this is not actually the sea. This is a big lake. So I hope you are ready for another great adventure. Karin will go on a few hikes and we will see volcanoes and mountains and amazing places. So let's go adventure people and... Nice yeah. And it's another beautiful day on the road. We've had this very lovely wild camp next to a river mouth um, with the sea and volcanoes all around and now it's down to serious business as we are slowly heading down the Cartera Austral. We've got a ferry booked for I think day after tomorrow so it's a slow cruise of 50 to 100 kilometers per day as we appreciate this amazing scenery. It's time to go, let's hit the road. After that great drive, we are properly back at the sea and not at a laguna or a lake or something connected to the sea. Karim is all excited to fetch some fresh mussels and to prepare it tonight. Don't know if you've seen our West Coast South Africa video, I will link it above, where she learned to eat bokums and um, fresh mussels from the sea. Go head over there after this video and go and watch it. So she immediately ran down to go and collect some mussels because it is low tide and a lot of other people were collecting. So we think this is it. She's never been so quick to park and run off at any wild camp ever. Norna Peren waiting to catch the ferry and we're quickly popping in for a bite to eat at this local food market. We are really enjoying the seafood. Let's go, we're hungry. We were really enjoying the seafood, although meat was available as well. The prices in Chile was a shock after so many months in Argentina, but the portions were big enough to share. You had a choice of many small restaurants, although most of them served the same dishes, and the atmosphere was great.
We are waiting for our first ferry in Patagonia. Um, it's from Horno Perin. Horno Perin to I don't know where. Cale Chuck Caleta Chuck Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Caleta um, Gonzalo. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see what it what it is. And we're expecting to see mountains. Um, we've started to see a lot of snow-capped mountains and glaciers. So hopefully, we will be close to it when we pass the mountains. Um, yeah, see what we'll see. The ferry is supposed to leave at six, and it's now five, I think. Yeah, a lot of people, long queues. We cheated a bit. We're on the other side of the queue, but. Yeah. I think we're only going to take two. Oh, okay. We then hopped on the ferry heading south along the coast and through a fjord, slowly observing life in Patagonia, with small settlements scattered along the coast in this very remote area. Some of these settlements can only be reached by boat. Although it was sunny in summertime, there was a constant movement of clouds all around the lush green mountains and valleys. All around we were still followed by snow-capped mountains, and as the sun set we realized that we would arrive at our demarcation in the dark and had to hop on another ferry after a short drive before we could find a wild camping spot for the night. So after that very kilo <laughs> Ferry ride, we have arrived at our first disembarkment, and then it seems like we drive a little bit and get on another ferry and hop and I do a hop, skip, and a jump over the water. We did not know that initially, um, but that seems to be the way um, it rolls. We will just have to follow up all the other cars um, and see where they go. Um, everybody seems to get to move on to the next step. After about a, what the, how, far, how far did you drive? 14 kilometers. 14 kilometers drive, it's on to the next ferry. The night ferry. <laughs> yes. This will probably be the latest that we're going to drive on this time. <laughs> yeah. It's nearly morning. <laughs> We never ever drive at night. I think we've done it three times in two years. And today will probably be the, the latest. And it's a, it's a little bit uh, rainy. Slash it's like, misty. Slight like drizzle misty. So let's get on board. Okay, look, it doesn't be in the front. I want to be in front, man. I want to be in front. front. Two thousand front man, two thousand front, yes. <laughs> so, so all the guys who like chased off the first ferry are now put on the side, so they're gonna leave last. <laughs> not that it matters. It's not a race. It's not a race. Very good morning. We woke up again right next to the road, as you can hear from the traffic noise, in a very nice forest. It's very thick and very wet. We slept with the pitter patter of the rain on the roof. Um, and we are now very quickly getting ready and heading off to a campsite close to where Corinne's first walk is. That's um, holding thumbs um, that it doesn't rain tomorrow because this, this is not hiking weather. It's very misty, um, about 100, 200 meters up. We can just, just see some of the mountain peaks through the mist. Um, but it's not actually that cold. Patagonia so far hasn't been the freezing place that people have told us. And we haven't had much wind. Um, that might change as we move further down. But yeah, so let's go and find a camp spot. 
for the day. For the first time it feels to me like we're in Patagonia. Do this you think we will see it out of the day? I, I Can I check the weather? Yeah, I know. Yes, the channel it baby, channel. Yeah. Um, for the first time this is what we thought would be Patagonia. Wet, rainy, curves, the thick forest, thick fans. There's a very high one. Yeah. The height of some of the campers we see here just astounds us. Uh, I'm not sure how their road holding is with uh, that much high weight. But yeah, they're, they're, they're very, very common around here. We then found a great campsite close to Corinne's first height at the Camping El Volcan, a nicely laid out campsite with clean facilities, but only cold showers. Something that was common here, but a challenge for me in this cold weather. Good morning. After that very rainy night, we are prepping. Corinne is making her sandwiches for her first walk, for her first hike, and it's a brilliant sky. We loved the sun this morning, but it's getting hotter and hotter. Although it's very wet, we hope it's not too slippery for her when she goes walking. Um, and we can see the volcanoes in the distance. The insects are out. Lots of dew on the ferns. But yeah, we're ready for a brilliant day. Are you excited for your walk, sweetie? Yeah. You ready? Yeah, nearly. Um, it's going to be strenuous. The steps are as big as a toddler. Um, yeah, but going up a volcano, with, and then you're supposed to see a nice view of the lake. Um, but a lot of steps, so I'm looking for stick. Your cap, honey. Okay. Are you ready for the first? What's the what's the hike called? Volcano hike. The volcano hike. Sandero. Something. San Sandero's hike. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to test my patience with the flies. I'm going to check how many steps I can do. And okay. look at the volcano mm. and the lake. Yeah, and read the info before you go. Eh? Oh, that is just about the uh, mud. Yeah. When the oh, volcano the... erupted, and then over there, there's a board that shows you the oh, different the route. Yeah. Okay, have fun. The, oh, yeah, bye bye. 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 Now we're into the walk. Strava says I've done two kilometers already and it's really getting steep. Um, I can see clouds. I might be at the same height as they are, which is, should be pretty accurate. Um, yeah, just a shout out for all the guys who who laid the road and the steps and the wood just realized they didn't have to carry all of the wood up here because there's trees here mm, yeah okay let's do the last bit i'm hoping to reach station five soon five out of nine and then gonna have something to eat so um, had a quick break. Um, I think we are getting a stepping out of the forest now into the sun, approaching horsefly zone. Um, yeah, let's see how long it's going to take me. Okay, I present to you our first active volcano. Um, yes, that is steam smoke. Not sure, coming from the mountain. Apparently at night it has a red glow. Doesn't feel very hot. Then our 360 is a lake. And then beautiful view of the river and the ocean. Where I came from. Death. Mountains, tired people. A bit of snow over there just to complete the whole picture 
Ja, look at that. All active. Definitely worth it. Okay, and as I'm approaching the end of our of my hike, um, I think I really enjoyed it. A lot of steps. Um, but yeah, the, the vegetation, everything was really nice. Um, I think I am going to leave my stick here. It did help me tremendously with all the steps, but he is a bit too heavy. So I'll leave it for a fellow or somebody else who's going to do the work later today. Um, yeah, but stunning views, definitely worth all the climbing. Um, I think it was about four and a half kilometers in total and it took me two hours up. Maybe just over an hour down. Um, yeah, a bit hotter coming down, but really nice. Ready to do my next hike. And we are back at the sea again on the west coast after another crossing of the of the continent and this time at a black beach. So it's time for us to collect our little bit of sand. We've, we've done a, a, a lot of collections and it's time for some black beet sand. Bikin nader. When you can go protality somewhere off okay. And it's really black. Yeah. Pokemas? Uh, um, Pokemas, por favor. Bikin nader when you can go protality off okay. Yeah, I will need a um, few nice sand crack. Now, and all from volcanic uh, rock, as there's a lot of action in the earth here, and we must still add your volcanic um, rock, rocks that you collected yesterday. Yes. Nice. Oh, penguin. Oh, there's. We suspect there's a penguin over there because there's a maddening crowd of people. So, good. Karim's gonna go and have a look. We've had again a brilliant wild camp by the sea. Spent a lovely night and had a lovely barbecue here last night. Um, but it's time to push on further south to get some more hikes in for Karin and um, to see more of more volcanoes. Cheers! In our next episode, we find a wheelchair friendly hike, Karin hikes up to a glacier, and we visit the astounding site of the Marble Caves. But that's a story for another time, so please remember to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on future adventures. Thank you for our Patreons for making these videos possible.